Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. This is the first video in a series where I'm going to go a little more in depth on sending data back and forth without using the Nexion library. It's built upon a video that I recorded about a week ago. I'll put a link to it here in this portion of the video. In the main Nexion configuration here, it's a two-page project. I'm controlling a heater on this page and a motor on the other page. I have an e-stop switch, which when pressed disables the control button and turns the heater off if it's on. It also turns the motor off if it's on. I've added this slider which it will display the temperature. If you look at the page and the post initialization variable, I've disabled the TSW. I've got a video on that too. It shows how to disable an item on the page. In this case, I've disabled HO. I also check to see if this button has been pressed. If it is, I disable the heater control and I set it to off. I do the same thing on page two. Now, instead of using the Nexion library, I don't, on the heater control, I don't send the component ID. Instead, I print. I just send serial data over to the Arduino, and then I capture it in the Arduino. In this case, I'm going to send H for heater and then on, and H for heater and off, depending on the status of the switch. And on the other page, for the motor, I'm going to send motor on and motor off. And that's all I'm going to do is just when you press the button, it will send the corresponding signal to the Arduino to turn on and off the device. On the Arduino, I'm going to have a physical switch, an e-stop switch. So when you press it, it's going to cause both e-stop switches on the pages to turn red, and it will disable the button that's currently on the page that's showing. I'm also going to have a potentiometer that's going to send a signal to the Nexion. So I'm going to have two signals coming from the Arduino, and I'm going to have two signals being sent to the Arduino. And this is just the first step. I'm going to do more videos in this series, which is going to add more functionality as it goes. One thing I have to explain is on this slider, since in the Arduino I'm reading a voltage on an analog input, it's, it doesn't read the voltage in volts. It reads it in a range of 0 to 1024. So if you look at the if you look at the min and max value, I've got the minimum of 0 and the max of 1024, and then the value, initial value, set at 512, so it will start in the middle. This file, as it sits, will be available on CheapControls.com. There will be a link to it in the description of the video. I had a viewer submit a question and sent me a page on how he had his pins configured with the Nexion and Arduino, and I found that fascinating, so I've incorporated it into this video. In the Nexion itself, I've got two pages, page one and page two. And on the first page, I have two text box, one that just says the page, one that displays whether the heater is on or off, and then a button with heater control. I have a button that goes to page two, an e-stop, and then I've got the temperature slider. And I have the same down here. The buttons on the Nexion that correspond to things on the Arduino, I've lined them up across. If, they're, if they don't do anything, like the page change doesn't have anything to do with the Arduino, I just put an NC. On the Arduino, though, I'm going to use pin 7 for the heater, and I'm going to use pin 8 for the motor. I'm going to use analog pin A0 for the temperature, and I'm going to use pin 3 for my e-stop. And you can see I've got it on both, because when I press it, it's going to affect both. And this is a schematic for it, and this file will also be on the Cheap Controls website. We need to have a resistor in here between the LED and the output of the UNO, or you could damage the UNO. One of these will be for the heater, and one of these will be for the motor. And then I've got my two lines from the Nexion that go into the transmit and receive of the UNO. My reset button is on pin 3. The reason I chose pin 3 is it can be used as an interrupt. This is a normally open switch, so when it's open, it feeds 5 volts to here. When you press the button, it goes to ground. And then down here, I've got my potentiometer that's fed into analog pin 0. And it goes from 0 volts or ground 
to 5 volts. I had an audio failure while shooting this, and so I'm having to reshoot the video. I've already written the code, so I'm just going to go over the code as it's written. What I have is I have multiple variables just to make it easier to read down at the bottom. My F temp is the pin that I'm using to read my fake temperature input. I've got my E stop switch, which is on pin 3. My heater is going to be on 7. The motor is going to be on 8. And I have two variables to measure the temperature. One is the current temp. In other words, after we've read it, we're going to store it. And then I'm going to have another variable for when I, when I read in the temperature. In my setup, I have to have a serial begin at 9600. I have to set up my interrupt on my e-stop pin, which is 3. If you're not familiar with interrupts, you can go back through. I did a video on this. I'm going to run the emergency subroutine whenever there's a rising edge, whenever that switch on pin 3 goes from 0 to 5 volts. And then the heater and motor are set to outputs. The first thing I'm going to do in my loop is I'm going to read the analog temperature. So I store it in my reading variable. And if the reading variable is not equal to the current temp, in other words, if it's changed from the last reading, I'm going to set them to be equal, so that way if it doesn't change again, it won't run this. And then I'm going to put that value or send that value to the next shin. And the format we do that is page 0, dot h0, which is the slider, dot value, val, is equal to the current temperature. The temperature comes through as an integer, so we need to convert it to a string. And then we finish it by writing three ffs. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see if that a button has been pushed on the Nexion display. I had another comment where somebody had said to try and incorporate read and tell instead of if serial available. I plan on doing that at some point. I keep adding this note so I remember to do it. I set up a string and I call it data from display and I set it equal to nothing. And then I delay 30 seconds to make sure the Arduino has captured all the serial data. And then while there's data in the buffer, I take it one character at a time and I put it in the data from display. And then once the data has been collected, I just compare it to the four different values I'm sending it. Heater on, heater off, motor on, or motor off. And then I set my LEDs to high or low depending upon the data received. And that's it, and it just runs over that over and over and over. When I press the emergency stop switch, on the release it runs this script down here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to disable the heater and the motor. And it's very important to know that the Arduino is the object that turns the physical heater and motor on and off. So you want to do that right away. In an emergency situation you want to turn those off. Then we're going to send the command, the TSW, which disables the device. We're going to send the TSW command to whichever page is on, button 0 or B0, is what controls turning on and off the heater or the motor. So whatever page is active, we're going to make that so that switch is non-functional. The other button you don't need to worry about because when you change the page on the next shin, it will check the status of the e-stop switch and disable that automatically. But on both the e-switches, which is BT0 on page 1 and BT0 on page 2, you want to set those values to 1, which will put them in the e-stop state. And they're global, so that way they'll hold even when you change pages. And then down here what I did is I just put the word off. Instead of changing it to motor off or heater off, it's just the word off. That way you'll be able to tell that we sent it from by pressing the e-stop switch. And it's the same format, page 1, dot t1, which is the text one, and then dot text on both. If you're not familiar with this, I'll put a link to the first video I did on sending data back and forth without using the Nexion library. I put a delay of one second in there because I didn't want bounce in the switch. I didn't want it to flicker. And I also thought that a delay isn't the worst thing to have if you're in an emergency situation. You don't want something to accidentally come back on. So we turn everything off and then we delay. Now here we have the circuit. We have two lights. I can't remember which one's the heater and which one's the motor. We have our resistors that feed back to then our pins. I have a potentiometer over here which feeds into A1. It's not clear, but that's what's happening. And then I have my E switch right here. The first thing I'm going to do is adjust the potentiometer. 
and you can see that it's going up and down as we adjust the potentiometer. Now just pretend that that's a heater and the temperature is going up and down. And then here's my control button. I'm going to press it and you can see that the light came on. Let's go to page two. The motor light came on. So now if I hit the physical e-stop switch, both lights should go off and the e-stop button should turn to red. And they did. And now I shouldn't be able to turn the light on. Yes, it's been disabled. And if I go back to page one, it should be disabled also. But now if I release my e-stop, I should be able to turn it back on. So go to page two. I should be able to turn it on and off. So everything works as expected. We do have one problem, though, in here. If I turn on the lights and then I hit the E stop, I'm not sending anything from the Nexion to turn off the lights in the case of an emergency. All I'm doing is disabling the switch and setting that motor to off. What if the signal can get from the Nexion to the Arduino? but the signal cannot get from the Arduino to the Nexion. That happens sometimes. And in that case, if the e-stop switch was pressed, these would shut off as they do. As you can see, if I press it, everything goes off. But if you were to go up here and press start because it didn't get the signal that it's in an e-stop, they would start. So you need to put a safety in here that says in the e-stop situation, this, the Nexion cannot start it. So that's what we're gonna do in the next video. And as I said, remember that all the files are available at CheapControls.com. You can look for a link in the description of this video. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.